is an image of Bernie Madoff and this will be the culminating story in the financial scandals section. in 
surprise about Madoff's activities, but the bank never took action. Experts have estimated that the bank earned $483 million from Madoff's accounts before the scandal broke. So the image that we have here is, um, I think, a pretty common one if you remember the news reports when story broke. So this is Bernie Madoff as he leaves the federal court on Wednesday, January 14th, 2009 in New York. Once celebrated as a financial wizard, Madoff was now one of the most hated men in America. Madoff brushed aside questions about his financial strategies, saying that they were only a complex series of computerized algorithms which dictated his moves, but in the end he admitted that it was just a big Ponzi scheme. So the Madoff story is kind of interesting beyond um, just the basics of uh, another fraudulent financial scheme, because in this case there were a couple of issues. The first one was um, there was a major bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, was directly involved with Madoff because they were making money from all of the transactions every time he made deposits um, into their bank. Uh, they made money on all of those transactions. So although employees, and I'm sure they have various um, consultants, people involved in the financial sector that review um, activities of, of major um, deposits that are going into the bank, they have to have somebody like that or probably a team of people that take care of that. So they were raising red flags, and the main red flag would be that at any given time, Madoff only had a couple of hundred million dollars in the bank. Um, that might sound like a lot of money, two to three hundred million, but not when you consider um, the amount that was owed, which was, let me see again, seven billion. Um, was the amount of money that if, like, say, everybody wanted to do a run uh, and, and pull their money from um, their various accounts, uh, $7 billion would be due. So if you only had two or three hundred million, that should give, you know, that would be a red flag um, that something was wrong. You should have had a lot more money in there. Um, and so it's interesting that the bank for years investigate because they were making, even though they didn't make that much money according to them, they only made $483 million, but um, it's possible that they are not mentioning all of the various uh, fees that might have just been from Madoff's um, transactions, but I bet you they made more money because in the end they ended up paying like two point, how much was it? I think I read that 2.3 billion or something, 2.6 billion. They ended up paying in fines and penalties, um, but I bet you they made more than 483. Uh, it it just might be in different ways that they were making money, and they only listed one of the transaction fees as the amount that they made. But I think the other part of this that is interesting is the time frame that it came out. So this story was. Um, to the public in around, I guess, 2008. The thing is, in uh, 2008, um, the other major story was breaking about the bank bailouts and all of the um, financial situations that were occurring right at the end of uh, George W. Bush's presidency. Now, part of the conspiracy, I guess, um, or I don't know if it's a conspiracy, but part of, you know, what you read on the internet is that the reason that all of the um, banking crisis and financial, you know, scandals, everything sort of came to a head in 2008. Well, in the upcoming year, um, a new president, Barack Obama, was going to be coming up for elections. He was a young candidate with basically very little experience. Um, I, I think he only had one term in um, Congress. Uh, it was
President, Congress, or in the Senate, but he only had, he had not done a tremendous amount of time politically, and um, under normal circumstances, that would have been a problem, but if you just prior to an election coming out, you have a huge financial scandal, which in fact wasn't even George W. Bush's fault. All of the laws that created the scandal was done during Clinton's administration. So the housing crisis and the loan crisis that happened with the banks that required the bailout, those laws were put in place during Clinton's administration, not George W. Bush's. It all fell apart during George Bush's, but he got the blame. And so I think when he was leaving office, the um, approval rating for George W. was something in like the 30 percentile or something like that. It was really low, uh, one of the lowest for any leaving president. And so part of the concept or the conspiracy or whatever about that is that that was purposefully done, that they released all of the financial, you know, these major scandals right at the end, just prior to um, the uh, candidacy of Barack Obama coming into the mainstream because it sort of made it seem like he was going to bring about all of this change because people were so disgruntled with um, George W. Bush's presidency, even though he had not directly um, caused the financial crisis. He was just the sitting president when it was the story broke. The other part that kind of lends to that theory is the fact that even in Madoff's case, it says here that um, he was investigated starting from 1992, and uh, that means that they knew stuff was going on from such, you know, so many years. That was during, uh, I guess, was that during Clinton's presidency? Um, so they knew for a long time that Madoff was up to something, and that his securities and exchange company was, uh, something was weird as far as the discrepancy in how much money was in the bank and how much money was owed. So red flags were already up, but everybody was quiet for a number of years, almost as if they were waiting for the story to break, meaning that the Madoff story and the um, bank bailout story almost occurred simultaneously in 2008. Now, the other part of that conspiracy has to do with um, something called the Shemit Mayer. The Shemit Mayer, is, it's a Jewish term or a Hebrew term uh, that means financial reset. And basically, usually there's a huge financial cr uh, crisis during a Shemit Mayer. And um, I guess the stock market sometimes crash, or they have the big stock market crashes occurred during Shemit Mayer's. And part of the conspiracy behind that is that they kind of postpone these sorts of events. These events are like in the works, meaning that they stuff is happening behind the scenes, but they kind of wait for it all to accumulate so that um, the big bang, I guess, happens during the Shemit Mayer, which happened to be 2008. It's like the seventh year during the, I'm not really sure if it's Passover or Feast of Tabernacles, but there's some point that this, um, seventh cycle happens and there's some sort of a financial reset that occurs and it's usually publicly seen as a financial crisis like a a huge um you know something like a bailout or or the market crashes or something like that um so even though the Madoff situation had been like openly occurring since 1992 they were investigating it it was almost like they were waiting for the story to break and they kind of it at the same time um, that the bailout and everything else was breaking, like all of those financial stories came out together or back to back um, to sort of, you know, reiterate the point that this was a Shemit Mahir, even though nobody publicly knows about it. It's not like a concept that anyone is aware of. It's not published in the news. It's just kind of like a behind the scenes thing. But um, apparently people 
which would be like, you know, in this case it was a Democratic candidate um, named Barack Obama who was different in so many ways, not just ethnically and by way of his name, but, you know, as well as, well as his party and he was even running on the campaign of change and so forth. So a lot of people were hopeful for his administration and it was almost like um, punctuated by the fact that it was coming right after there was a lot of negativity in the news um, in regards to George W. Bush's presidency. I mean, uh, George W. Bush's presidency was racked with a lot of, I, I don't know if it was scandal, but there was a lot of animosity, not just from the war, but various decisions like how we got into the war and, you know, different things that happened. But the financial thing was like right at the end, it was sort of the nail in the coffin as far as the um, sort of like the taste that was left in the mouth kind of a thing. Like people were just disgusted and they, and they just wanted something different. And um, they were willing to go with a candidate that, you know, maybe under different circumstances might not have been seen in the same light. That's what the conspiracy is, that it, all of this came together, you know, came to a head, purposefully released at the same time so that it matched up with the 2008 Shemit Mayer as well as um, uh, punctuated the end of the Bush presidency. So I don't know if that's true, but uh, it is interesting that all of these financial cases came out right at that time in 2008. Okay, so that was the final um, scandal on, I guess, these financial scandals. The next section, let's see, is going to be about sports. And we have um, an image of Lance Armstrong. So that, I don't know if that's the first story, but it might, it might not be the first story, but uh, we're going to start the sports scandals next. Okay, guys. So that was another.